Hello and welcome to special edition of the Ghanaian Farmer on Joy Prime. My name is Enyonam. This program is proudly brought to you by Lizzie Tomato Mix. Today we are bringing you the essence of the sanitization workshop on 2021 Planting for Food and Jobs campaign organized by the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana in partnership with Ministry of Agriculture. We will bring you the speech of the various speakers who attended the program and what their concerns are and the way forward in the agri sector. So stay tuned after this break, we will be bringing you all the speeches for you to pick up a thing or two and what is happening within the agriculture space. I'm going for a quick breather. I'll be right back after this. <laughs> I met Kelvin in town. When I first met him, it was love at first sight. The feeling was mutual. You see how I treat your father? Mm -hmm. Your father loves me so much because I always give him good food. <laughs> I love Kelvin and with all the stress from his family, I didn't want to lose him. So I decided to act fast. Mother! Mother. Mm? Mm, sorry. Mm. Where's the wedding family? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Gigi or anything. Lizzie tomato mix was just what I needed to prove my worth. At the bow of fear for here, and I have all that in just one pack. Lizzie tomato mix makes food taste delicious. Lizzie tomato mix can be found in some shops nationwide. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. When this program actually came, uh, we were happy because we've been calling for support to smallholder farmers. And we thought that that initiative was the best way of supporting farmers. So we quickly launched a monitoring to see how the coupon system was benefiting farmers. Now, what we found in all our monitorings in those years were that there were always late delivery of the subsidized fertilizer. In some occasions, there were smuggling. Uh, since 2009 and even till date, the target of the subsidized fertilizer is on the smallholder farmers. But we realized that in most occasions, uh, the smallholder farmers were not getting. And those were the findings of uh, our monitoring since. And then there are occasions where subsidized fertilizer is sold far higher than the government agreed prices. And there are shortages, poor quality and quantity of some of the subsidized fertilizer. So those were the, some of the findings that we got in the previous years. Now, the 2020 monitoring. Um, was actually the aim of uh, that project, which is being funded by International Budget Partnership, was looking at an efficient fertilizer subsidy program for enhanced food security production by smallholder farmers. And uh, we thought that it would be more efficient if you target particular districts and the particular commodities that are grown in those areas. So we focus our monitoring on the rice growing districts and districts closer to the border towns because of uh, the smuggling issues. What are the variables we are looking at too? So we wanted to actually monitor timely delivery, uh, prices of the subsidized fertilizer. We wanted to establish whether farmers are actually getting it at the government subsidized prices or they were paying less or more. We're also looking at the quality and quantity of subsidized fertilizer, uh, easiness of uh, access by smallholder farmers, especially women, uh, smallholder farmers' preferred fertilizer type, and then availability when it is most needed, and then issue of smuggling, and then hoarding in the distribution process. So those were the variables that we were looking up to. So we tried to make this 
as practical as possible. So we use our own farmers in those areas to do the monitoring for us. And then what we did was uh, we did a focus group discussions in some occasions. We had face-to-face -face interviews. We also use uh, key informant information where there are smugglers to be able to get the information. And then we administer questionnaires and then also engage some experts. So these are the districts, the sample districts that we use. So uh, we try to look at, uh, in the southern Ghana, those areas that we grow rice. And then, uh, so if you look at southern Ghana, we selected Hohoi. And then uh, we were able to interview 340 male farmers and then 220 female farmers. And then Sayo Sudoku, we interviewed 360 male farmers, 190 male farmers. You go to northern Ghana, and then we have Gushegu, we have West Mamprose, we have Mamprugu Mogduri, and then in Upper East, we have Pusiga, and then Upper West, we have Sesala East districts. And then you agree with me that when you take a, a Pusiga and then Sesala, this is one of the, the hot spots where fertilizer smuggling has been taking place because of the closeness of uh, these districts to the border towns. So as I said earlier on, uh, the reason why we selected these districts for our study is because those districts, they grow a lot of rice, which was uh, one of the uh, target commodities. Uh, we also have members in those districts. Uh, we also realized that over the years, there has been high smuggling in those uh, areas because they were closer to the border towns. And then they also consume a lot of fertilizer. Now, the type of respondents that we targeted were mainly smallholder farmers. So a total of 4,200 smallholder farmers were interviewed. And then uh, we have a, a two focus group in each of the districts. And then 14 retailers were, uh, were engaged. And then we also spoke to officers of the district department of agriculture. So these are some of the focus groups uh, that were conducted. So if you look, we have Yagba. Gusegu, Pusiga, and Hohoi. Cherish farmers that are present, all protocols observed, friends from the media. I am very happy to be here this morning. First, having told this is a sensitization exercise. As a matter of fact, when the invitation was extended to me, I had equally important assignments. As I'm talking to you, I should have been at Legon, also for another fertilizer engagement. The challenge we are having is that, because of the smuggling, because of the smuggling, that some of us are involved. Some of us sitting down here, some of us are involved. I will say that, okay? you find it difficult to trace the quantities that are being given to each of the regions. And he also mentioned that the communities don't know how to react to some of the smuggling. I mean, uh, that statement, uh, Charles, we need to look at it critically. Why do I say so? 2019, 2020, I spent a bit of time at all the border areas, especially Sala East, Sala West, spent a bit of time there looking at the smuggling. The same communities that they are telling you they don't know, they are part of it. They are part of it. So why should they tell you that and you believe that they are not part of it? Okay? Pro further. Pro further to see whether they are not part of it. And some of them are also unconcerned. And uh, some of them, if you ask them, those that are critical, because it's a cartel involving politicians, involving ch uh, chiefs, involving uh, what do you call it, uh, communal, uh, uh, community leaders, farmers, security agencies, some of the smallholders are afraid to report. Not that they don't know. Not that they are not part of it. But... They are afraid to point out that this particular person is involved or not. 
what we all intend it to be. Suffice it to say that we all agree that the planting for food and job has come to put a lot of uh, uh, what we ordinarily say in our parlance, a lot of vim in agriculture. And so there is a lot of excitement among many farmers across the nation, both the young and old, and it's making agriculture quite exciting. Now, as an organization, I mean, if you listen to our name, I'm from the International Budget Partnership. Where our interest lies most is the resources, the public resources that government is investing in this program. And you we will all attest, those who have taken interest in looking at the budget numbers, you will see that government has invested significant resources to make the program a success. When you take the planting for food and job budget, you realize that the most significant item that receives support is the fertilizer subsidy. Uh, the director of budget is here. If I'm wrong, he can correct me. So it stands to reason that it will be important for us to keep an eye on what return we are getting from that kind of significant investment that government is making. And that is where we come in. We have been partnering with the Peas and Farmers Association, and our prime interest is to work together to ensure that the farmers have easy access to the subsidized fertilizer to achieve its intended objective of servicing smallholder farmers. The whole idea is that these poor farmers, who are the backbone of agriculture in Ghana, I mean, when it comes to Ghana, when it comes to Ghana unlike other countries, our food security depends on the smallholder farmers. Even our top cash crop, cocoa, and all the others, is the smallholder farmer that is leading the, 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 the charge. So in that direction, it makes a lot of sense for us to ensure that the smallholder farmers are actually benefiting from this program. And so for us, we do our budget analysis and try to see where the possible challenges may be and engage government on what remedial actions can be taken in order to address uh, those challenges. So without making, um, I mean, a very long speech, uh, th this will be the, the key focus of our participation in today's forum. And uh, I look forward to hearing from all other stakeholders who are here. Um, we are here to learn and to contribute to make this program a success. And so I will encourage all participants here uh, to be active and, to, and fully present to make this a success. I thank you all for your attention. Let's look at the overview, just to remind ourselves what we seek to do as a ministry, as partners. We have the overall goal is to modernize the agriculture sector. Then if you want to modernize agriculture, you have come up with a set of objectives. The objectives, the first one, to ensure immediate availability of crops, improve productivity levels of those selected crops, extended support to private sector service providers like we are working with the private sector entities to deliver the implementation processes, and also using this platform to offer jobs, and the jobs we are targeting the youth. And lastly, under 1D1F, the ministry is also trying to come out of raw materials that can be supported, the 1D1F. So these are the objectives that we set up for ourselves under the food cross model of planting for food and jobs. The components of the project or, or the campaign is one, provision of improved seeds and fertilizers, as we all know. Then we are also talking about dedicated extension service delivery, 
supporting the partners to also do the marketing and also to attract the youth to the agriculture sector that are also to bring on board ICT based programs. So these are the components under the food crops, under the planting for food and jobs campaign. For 2021, the target beneficiaries we are targeting 1.5 million farmers. 1.5 million farmers. For example, 2020, we targeted 1.2 million and we ended up getting more farmers. So this year, we are targeting to reach 1.5 million farmers. And to cover all the 16 regions and all the 260 districts of the country. The focus crops include the cereals, we have the maize, rice, and sorghum. The legumes, we have the soya bean, granite, and copy, then have the vegetables, assorted vegetables, then have roots and tuber crops, mainly cassava and orange fresh sweet potato. So these are all the crops that we are targeting. I already mentioned that we have other priority projects, food cross production model, that is what I'm doing now, tree cross model that's planting for export and rural development. So I'm leading the two. Then last saw the brand model railing for food and jobs. We have greenhouse technology development model, then mechanization model. These are the models under planting for food and jobs. However, we have other complementary interventions, plant protection and regulation on the fertilizers issues. They have to test the quality. They have to support tests in getting size. They are supposed to assess planting material, all sorts of things. Then we have irrigation development, also supporting us in developing some of the improved seeds, et cetera, et cetera. Then have post-harvest management. That's also to ensure that you don't lose most of the crops that you are producing. So these are priority areas and priority interventions the Ministry of Food and Agriculture is implementing. Now, I'm zooming into the 2021 implementation guidelines for fertilizers and seeds. And that is one of the pillars, one of the five pillars. Okay. The objective or the purpose of coming with this, this guideline is to ensure efficiency and value for money in the distribution of improved seeds and fertilizers under the campaign for 2021. So as a result of that, we are ruling out these guidelines. Yes. The first one, when we started in 2017, we allow our partners that are giving us the seeds to do it in, anyhow in their own backs, and we realized there were a lot of challenges. So moving forward, lessons learned from 2017, 2018. You realize that all seeds and fertilizer must be bagged in size of PFJ labels and logo. So we needed to design a bar with PFJ logo and it has a yellow band on the back so that even if you pack them on trucks, whatever they are, even if you are far off, you see the logo and then how the whole bags have been designed. And it's a typical thing that I came across when I, when I myself and the regional minister for Upper West, we went to Burkina Faso. Driving through some of the cities, you can see they, they didn't allow us to go, come closer to where they have parked the fertilizers belonging to Ghana. However, wherever you are standing, because the logo and how we have designed the bath, you can see that all these bars are from Ghana. Okay? So it's helping us to identify the bars. Secondly, initially we used to have all the, bar, all the fertilizers in 50 kilograms weight. That was 2017. 2018, as lessons learned from 2017, 
we needed to change the bus. And then the reason for behind, I, I was doing some presentation somewhere. We were accused of being biased. First, we restricted ourselves to 25 kilograms back to the five. Now the first, it was three regions. Now five regions in the north. And then the other regions, they were using the 50 kilograms back. The reason behind this is that you wanted to get paralysis that can be traceable in the five to differentiate between those that are meant for subsidy program and those that are meant for the open market. Okay? But having experienced this, now 2019, 2020, 2021, every bag under the subsidy should be in 25 kilograms. So that is the rationale. Director and representative of MUFA and the Ministry of Finance. Input dealers present, PFAC members and staff present, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the board and management of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, PFAC, I welcome all of you to this important meeting to discuss the Planting for Food and Jobs campaign for 2021. I wish to first of all thank the Director of Crop Service, Mr. Sev Ose Akoto, for taking time of his busy schedule and even skipping on equal important program to be here for this uh, important occasion. We appreciate you and your team's hard work for supporting in organizing this program and similar ones in the other regions. We hope this good work relationship will, with uh, PFAC and MUFA will continue forever. I also wish to thank the International Budget Partnership and the Open Society Initiative of the, for their continued support for our activities in going, organizing this uh, program. We are grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, let me use this opportunity to thank the Ministry of Food and Agriculture led by the Honorable Minister, Dr. Afriye Ose Akoto, for introducing Planting for Food and Jobs Program, PFG, leading to, improve, to improvement of agriculture performance in the last few years. The subsidy of fertilizer and seed in particular have brought a lot of re relief to peasant farmers across the country and contributing to improving crops yields. We are particularly happy with the inclusive of the organic fertilizer as part of the fertilizer subsidy program. And we hope measures will be put in place to ensure that farmers get used to organic fertilizer due to the benefit that comes with using organic to the soil and our health. Ladies and gentlemen, while acknowledging government's efforts in supporting smallholder farmers through the PFJ and the numerous agriculture programs introduced by government, there are some concerns that I would like to draw the ministry attention concerning fertilizer subsidy. Firstly, the reduction of the subsidy component from 50% to, to 38% will put a lot of pressure on the smallholder farmer, especially women, give the impact of COVID-19 on the activ activities of farmers. As you know, farmers did not benefit from the government stimulus package for businesses affected by the COVID-19 due to the criteria that was used for selecting beneficiaries. While acknowledging the financial difficulties that government is going through, subsidy on farm inputs is the best support that government can give to farmers. Secondly, considering that we are in the month of June, which is the planting period for most farmers, it has become 
very frustrating for our members who are unable to access to access to a subsidized fertilizer. As I'm talking to you, there is no single subsidized fertilizer on the market, even though the ministry has subsidized, the ministry has given directive for supplies to start distributing fertilizer. Ladies and gentlemen, I have spoken to a number of fertilizer companies just last week, and they said they cannot supply yet because government is here to pay for the fertilizer they supplied last year. They also claim most of them contracted heavy loans and without payment. It will be difficult to go back for loans again for this year. I am using this, this platform to appeal to the Ministry of Finance to take this as a matter of agency and try to pay the companies because the, the effect is on farmers. As you are aware, fertilizer application is a time-bound uh, activity. And if you miss it, if you plant for a, a month without getting fertilizer to apply, then you better stop farming. It's not going to give you any, uh, any meaningful resource. Lastly, to improve information sharing and understanding of new modalities for each planting season, PFAC humbly appeal to MOFA to institute a pre-season dialogue among all the key stakeholders in the fertilizer and seed value chain to share ideas on new guidelines for the program. This will enable all, including the fertilizer companies, the farmers, and the ministry to brainstorm and take collective decision for the new season. On this note, I want to thank you all for coming and wish you a successful program. Thank you so much. Thanks for staying. You're still watching the Ghanaian Farmer on Joy Prime and showing now is the speeches of the various speakers who attended this year's sanitization workshop on 2021 Planting for Food and Jobs campaign. We'll wrap up on today's episode and next week we'll bring you another exciting educative episode on the Ghanaian Farmer. Many thanks to our proud sponsor Lizzie Tomato Mix. If you have any comment or any view, you can visit our social media platform, the Ghanaian Farmer across board and remember to subscribe to our youtube channel the ghanian farmer until next week it's a bye for now mm -hmm.